The next class is about how to raise children who can protect themselves. Is that a topic I'm proud of? Because children are not supposed to be protecting themselves. Adults are supposed to be protecting them. But hey, what do we have in a dysfunctional society where even the adults are not trusted with the children? So what do we want to do? Why we parents, adults who sincerely, genuinely love these children are doing our best to protect them. We also want to empower them to be able to protect themselves because the truth of the matter is we are not always with them. Your kids are in school. The other time I saw on, on news how a man entered the school claiming to be sent, to have been sent by um, some children's parents to come and pick them. They are in school now. You don't know what happens to them. You don't want to say, oh, because this society is so, is so bad. You don't want to send your child on an errand. How would they grow to become independent? How would they learn responsibility? So why we try to raise children with character skills, responsibility, independence, we also want to realize that the society is not as it was before. So we want to empower them with the ability, with the skills to protect themselves in the face of danger. The other day I shared a post on social media about a girl who was sent on an errand. She entered a tricycle and an elderly man came and asked her, oh, sit on my laps. And, you know, for a long time she wasn't found. I learned she's been found down now. I don't have the details. Hopefully when I have the details, I'll share I really would love to know what happened. But then we need to raise children who are able to protect themselves and by protecting themselves i mean protect themselves from bullies protect themselves from pedophiles protect themselves from kidnappers since the adults who are supposed to be protecting them are actually the one perpetrating these harms to them then these children can as well learn to stand up and protect themselves now this is what i'll be teaching you today how to embrace children who can protect themselves in the face of of dangers welcome back to parenting with enemy rebel if you are new here i say welcome so what you want to do is to sit back and check our previous videos we have amazing resources that will empower you greatly for your parenting journey so you want to um, sit back you want to watch you want to learn make sure you always get your pen and your paper whenever you are watching this video because there is a lot of value here for free so you want to share this link with other people you know so that everyone will benefit from it. You want to subscribe. You want to drop your comments in the comment section. Just drop your questions. I'm always there to take your questions. You also want to like. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I also want you to do the same. I want you to share in your community, share on your stories, your statuses, share in the communities you belong to so that every parent will get empowered. Now, just imagine if parents watch this video and they actually take action. What do you think will happen? Very many children will be able to actually protect themselves. And the more children will have protecting themselves, the more these bad guys, in my children's language, you know that they are busted. So share again, share this video. Do well to invite parents to this community. Let them know that here's something is happening on Parenting with any near rebel. Now, the first thing you want to do in raising children who can protect themselves is to teach them about personal safety. You want to use real life cases you are seeing to teach them. You want to sit them down and actually run them through what it means to what personal safety means. Then whenever you see situations arise, you want to take them as teachable moments. It can be, oh, a kidnap case you read on social media, you want to talk to your child about it. It can be bullying case you read about schools or you notice about schools or in schools, you want to talk to your child about it. It can be um, sexual abuse, you want to talk to your child about it. It can be even accident or domestic accident or anything. You actually want to talk to your child about it and relate it to their safety, why they need to be safe, the role they can play in their own safety how they need to be alert to dangers. So even though they have to trust family members, they have to trust friends, but there is something. They always need to be alert. So that is one of the first thing you want to do. You want to take every moment as a teachable moment. Now, this is why one of the things I always encourage parents to do is to um, team their, team their weak moth or anything. When you team it, you want to reinforce 
you want to look for every opportunity to reinforce the theme of your month or of your week if you're not even theming you can have your goals you have weekly goals you have monthly goals as a parent as a family when you have your monthly goals for example if your goals for this week is personal safety you want to look out for opportunities opportunities to actually reinforce lessons on personal safety let me give you a particular example even though it's not related to personal safety I always teach my children something that they should never ever laugh at people be when people are different from them because there was a time my kids had um special children in their school inclusive they had special children in their school two children and my daughter would come home and say oh he can fart without even saying excuse me he does this and all of that when he's eating his drooling and things like that i always wanted them to know that you see these people they did not create themselves by themselves and i always like to tell them that Everyone is created for a purpose. You do not know why God has created that child like that. You have no idea. So you don't laugh at them. Because if God says he created us in his image and likeness, and if you are laughing at someone, it simply means that you are laughing at God. If someone is laughing at you for the way you look, it simply means the person doesn't know God. The person is laughing at God. The person doesn't know God. The person is ignorant of who God is. That is why the person is laughing. And because you are not ignorant of who God is, you don't laugh at people who are different from you. So yesterday we had a fellowship. There was a young boy in this fellowship, maybe 13 or thereabout. So we're close and we're going home. And someone told me he fell. So we got downstairs to check on him. And I realized... um he fell and so the siblings were there i asked of course i've known him for a while it wasn't strange to me so they said oh um he he was having a seizure and it was triggered by by stress now in the fellowship we didn't we don't really do anything stressful but however because they have children's day they are preparing for he, he said he was going to sing was going to do a song during the um, children's day pre um, presentation and all of that i think you know anxiety um stage fright just trying to process everything that actually um, was that actually um pressured him and that was what triggered his condition and he felt oh god home it was a teachable moment for me to remind my children that you see everyone is not the same the boy did not make himself that way god made him that way who knows why god made him that way nobody knows it may be for a unique purpose it's always to bring glory and honor unto unto god so now this is why you never laugh at people instead you always show kindness to people you see people that are not like you show kindness to them be kind to them it may even be one of the reasons god created them is for you to show kindness to them you can never tell you know so it was a teachable moment Telling them, also um, talk to them about how special everyone is, how God has dis designed everyone for their purpose. It was an opportunity for me to talk about transgender, homosexuality, and all of that. They were not related. Yes, I told them that, you see, God already has created you for a purpose, a perfect plan. God is not a confused God. No, he has a perfect plan for you. You don't know what the plan is. So what you need to do is daily to ask God, what your plan for my life is so that you can key into that plan and you are not going to live a confused life transgender and the boy having um issues and um, health issues they are not related but it was a teachable moment because i have a goal i have a goal to teach them that life is for a purpose so i don't know if you are getting the picture the same thing applies so when i see issues around surrounding safety it is an opportunity for me to reinforce my lessons on faith, on safety, personal safety. It can be talking about pedophile issue. It can be talking about abuse. Um, what is it called? Kidnap and um, even the accident at home or anywhere. It can just be anything. But it's always an opportunity to teach these children about safety, what you want them to know, the role they can actually play, and the role everyone around them can play. So they need to understand why they need. To be safe so that's the first thing you want to do you want to teach your child about safety and let them know why they need to be safe all the time now so the next thing you want to do is to talk about boundaries with your children talk about teach them boundaries teach them danger signs they need to know yes respect adults be kind to people 
all those things we try to teach them to um, help them grow into responsible individuals, individuals with integrity, individuals with empathy. That is all what we all want. However, they should know that there is a boundary. In my book, Manners and Poise, we have boundaries with adults. It's a lot. Respect adults. Um, run errands for adults. Obey adults and do certain things for adults. But there is a limit to it. I always say to children when I teach them that you do not have to do everything an adult tells you to do. No. Respecting an adult, fine. That is okay. But you do not have to do every single thing an adult tells you to do. You know, if you are not comfortable, and I tell my children that if you are not comfortable, the first thing you do is to say no. If you do not understand, ask questions. If you're not comfortable, say a very big no. Start by saying a no, you know. So teach children boundaries, where to start, where to stop with people. Respect people, um, show kindness to people, do all sorts of manners. But there is a limit to everything you want to do. For example, I tell my children that. We have something we do, act of kindness. So every day I tell them, when you go to school, show at least two acts of kindness a day. And I tell them that if you have a friend who just stands up from her seat and say, oh, get my bag for me. And the friend is going and you grab the friend's bag and you run after the friend. That is not act of kindness. That is foolishness because the friend is not incapacitated. So you're actually showing kindness when you are helping someone in need. Someone is in need. You help the person. That is how you are showing kindness. If the friend, for example, has a lot to carry and then the friend is struggling with the bag, you say, oh, don't worry, let me grab that for you. That is an act of kindness. Not the friend just saying, oh, grab my bag and follow me. No, that is not an act of kindness. So you need to um, teach your children to know where to stop. You want to raise them or oh, want to raise responsible and responsible children. There's a boundary to it. You want to raise them um, self-disciplined children. There's a, or, um, a kind children. There's a boundary to it. You want to raise children who are, who are, um, obedient to adults or who are, um, respectful to adults. There's a boundary to it. You need to teach your children boundaries where to stop. I really recommend my book, Manners and Poets, for everyone who has children from ch um, children to teenagehood. There's a boundary to where you can stop with adults, even with people around you, even your parents. There's a boundary to where you can stop with your parents. I have a neighbor who used to tell his son that, you see, if one day I come to you, I start touching your, your private area, your genital areas, I start touching them, you know that something is wrong with me. You know that is either the devil has entered me or I am possessed. You know that I need help. I need help. Even if I tell you keep quiet, even if I bribe you, even if I buy all the nice things for you, don't keep quiet because if you keep quiet, you are not helping me. I need help because it's not a normal thing for me, your mom, to do that to you. So I need help. So the only thing you need, the only way you can help me is by telling people, Telling someone what I am doing to you so that they can help me to, for my brain to be examined. So even as parents, there is a boundary to these things. People, no matter how people around you, your relatives, everything, your child needs to know that there is a boundary to um, their relationship or their interaction. So teach your child about boundaries. Another thing that is very important is raise your child to be assertive. Raise them to be bold. Raise them to be confident. They understand boundaries. Now, it is one thing to actually teach your children verbally. It's another thing for them to have the skills to be able to, to, um, to, be able to see it through what you have taught them. So focus. After teaching them these things, telling them about their boundaries, or why they need to be safe, or um, situations where um, they require to be safe, then you teach them about boundaries with adults, with relatives, with people around and everything. Somebody cannot just say, come and follow me somewhere. You must tell your mom that, oh, follow me somewhere. You know, I read a, I read somewhere about um, a woman who actually went to the children's school, who went to a French children's school to pick them. And that was how she took them somewhere and killed them. The children trusted that woman because it's someone they know. The parents did not even suspect. So it's someone they know. Someone they all knew, and that was how the woman was jealous because I'm not sure I remember the story. I think the woman married the man she was supposed to marry. That was the story or something like that. It happened in the north in Nigeria, and she never forgave the woman. And after a long time, she, she was a friend to the woman and pretending 
she went to the woman's school, picked the children, told the children, oh, my mo your mom said I should pick you from school. And the school actually re released the children to her. And that was how she killed them and dumped them in a well. You know, it's really a sad story. So teach your children about boundaries. Like what I teach my children, I will tell you, I always tell them that you don't open the door for anyone when anybody knocks. You don't open the door. So at the point they were doing it to their daddy, if their dad comes home and knocks, they will come and say, mommy, dad is at the door. I'll be like, seriously? You know? <laughs> so my husband has a cousin that lives around close to us and we are really very close. And even when the man comes, he will, they will have to say, mommy, Uncle Charles is at the door. Should I open the door for him? And I'll tell them, yes. It is not because I do not trust that um, my husband's cousin. No, absolutely. Because he's, he's one of the um, finest people I've seen. I know. But the truth of the matter is, children don't know they don't understand certain things for example even their aunties i tell them anybody at the door come and tell me come and tell me because when you tell them to open the door oh relatives come open the door and all of that they may just open the door they have seen it with someone i know how we can call people brother sister uncle auntie oh good morning my good morning sir good morning mommy they think oh they are related to you and then the person comes and you are not at home and you know it they can just want to open the door for the person so i always tell them that don't open the door for anyone without my permission if your mom if your dad is not at home i am not at home you answer the person from the door who is there do not open the door even if the person picks up his phone and say oh your mom is there mommy says open the door no i have a phone i live with you at home so what happens is i tell the person to call your mom or call your dad tell your mommy or your dad not to speak to you from the person's phone rather call the line at home it is compulsory that is the only thing even if the person i put the phone on speak the person puts the phone on speaker and you are hearing my voice and you are sure it's me you are seeing my video do not open the door even if it's a video call do not open the door rather tell the person to tell me to call the number in the house when i call the number in the house you take it you answer you confirm that it's me then you can open the door you know it's just a way because I know it's extreme, but hey, extreme situations require extreme solutions. Safety for our children has become an extreme case for concern. So we need to go extreme in our approach. So again, I was talking about um, I was talking about assertiveness. So let's go back into assertiveness. Okay, so I was talking about assertiveness. So I'm saying that raise your child to be bold to speak up. You are creating, you are t teaching them about boundaries. You as a parent, because it's wanting to teach your child. Another, another thing for them to have the skills. I always say that there are three ways we teach our children. There are three ways. Maybe one day I'll do a class on how to teach children effectively. The first thing is to teach them verbally. You sit them down, you talk to them, you teach a moment, you can use them. Um, audio visual aids and everything to teach them that's one thing when it comes to skills acquisition you want them to have the skills the next thing you want to do is to give them practice opportunity you see tailors people go to learn um, fashion design they teach them they give them machine to sew people go to learn uh, every skill you want to learn you see even medicine when people have learned to be uh, to have learned to be doctors and everything, they send them to housemanship. Why do they do that? To practice it hands on, hands on. So your children need practice opportunity. You are raising your child to be assertive. They need practice opportunity, and they need to start with you, you. Practice opportunity. They start with you. They start with the adults around. Now, this is why everyone must be on your parenting page. I'm going to do a class of parenting on the same page. Having everyone on your, on, on, on you just need to just, you just need to stay glued to this channel because I have a, a lot of amazing classes we are going to have. Everyone must be with you on the same page. Your spouse, the major adults around. They must be with you on the same page. You can't be raising a assertive child and everyone is hushing the child. Even your own, your, their own siblings. They just need to be on the same page. I always tell my children, you don't have a right to hush another person. Let them say what they want to say. The thing is, if you're not comfortable with what they are saying, like this morning my son, my daughter was singing and my sister old was saying, oh, apparently it's disturbing me. I always tell them that, you see, as long as you are not incapacitated, 
you have a choice to stand up and leave there. The house is big enough. You can decide to go to your room. Close the door. Nobody will disturb you. Her, her, her singing will not come there. You can decide to go to your toilet. Close the door. Her song will not disturb you there. But you don't have a right to hush her to tell her to keep quiet. That is it. As a parent, your children, you don't, you don't hush them. You don't have them keep quiet. The adults in your house, your neighbor, your, the adults in your house, they don't have a right to hush your children. If you want to raise assertive children, your neighbors, let them know that you are raising assertive children. One of the things they need to do is to always, your, that is why you need to draw the lines for your children between being rude and being assertive. They, they are they are assertive and they are not rude. You are raising assertive children and not rude children. So they will, you will draw the line for them. One of the things you want to do is to teach them. I do that with my children, especially my daughter. I do that with them all the time. Instead of saying this, this is the proper thing to say. You know already a, a, a phrase or a sentence or a word that will make them not permissive but assertive and not make them rude or aggressive. Now, there's a difference between being permissive, being assertive, being rude and aggressive. So you want them to be assertive and not permissive or rude. So if they are coming permissive, you want to give them the right word, phrase or sentence that will appear assertive. If they are coming rude, you want to tell them, hey, this is the proper thing to say because you need to be assertive and not rude or permissive. So you want to let people around you give your child a voice. I read somewhere where the um, a parent said the, 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 the person living with her smacked the child, I think three years or four years, for no greeting. No. No. Smacking is not it. You can tell the child how to greet. Look for a way to always remind the child to greet because they will forget. So do you remind them to greet when you were the child's age? Do you remember to greet all the time? So a way that is empowering that is it. So teach your children, not even teach, build assertiveness in them. In, a, in another time in the class, we are going to look at practical ways to build assertiveness in our children so that this class is not too long because assertiveness, raising assertive children is a different ball game altogether. Another thing you want to do is to, I've talked about making, bringing everyone on the same page, even your child's school. Your child's school. Your child should be able to stand up. I always tell my children, see, you are in school to learn. For example, you are in school to learn. That's number one. Number two, I always talk to them about self-respect. I always tell them, don't deliberately do, don't do things that will make someone pick on you. Whether your teacher, your classmate, or anyone. Don't do things that will make someone pick on you. Because if you do so something... Uh, and your teacher picks on you, I may not be able to defend you. But if you do something, and your teacher, you do something that you respect yourself, and someone picks on you, tell me about it, and we are going to talk to the person about it. We are going to have a talk with the person about it. You know, for example, I know in some schools, some teachers will say, ah, you ask too much questions. I'll tell them, don't ask questions. In fact, it is a rule for you to ask questions. Come and tell me your teacher says you ask too much questions, too many questions. And I'll go and ask the teacher, dear sir, dear ma, what is my child in school for? He, she is in school to learn. Is in school to learn. That is it. Is in school to learn. His purpose of being in school is to learn. Your purpose of being in school is to teach. And if you have, if he has not learned, teaching has not taken place. So if he has not learned, it simply means you have wasted your time. You, are, you, are, you have wasted your time in school. You have wasted his time or her time in school. So if your child, if a child asks you questions 10, 20 times, it simply means that you have not achieved your purpose of being in school, which is to make the child learn. So you don't have a right to sh shut them. No matter how dumb the question is, you can always find a way around it. So you want to make sure that everybody is on the same page. That way, they are reinforcing what you are teaching. No, they are not breaking your child while you are trying to build your child. We are also going to, I'm so going to do about teaching, working with your um, your child's school. We're going to do all of this in <laughs> subsequent time. So you need to stay glued to this channel. You need to invite everyone you know to be part of this fellowship so that we can all learn and grow together. Another thing you want to do is to model self-protection. Let your children see you standing up for yourself. 
let them know that you are not a walkover. Many parents, you cannot, you don't like it, you take it. You come, many parents, they complain too much. You know what you do when you complain? You are letting your child know that you are helpless. You are helpless. Minimize the complaint. No, it's not funny. Minimize the complaint. Find a way around situations. Com when you complain, you, you let your child know that you are not helpless. You are helpless. You are not teaching them to stand up for themselves. You are not teaching them to find solutions to problems. You are teaching them to be to 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 be permissive. Because that is what you do when you when you when you are like when you are complaining. You complain about a friend doing something to you. You are not facing your friend, saying it face to face. You say it behind. Oh, this woman is like this. That's why he did like this. You buy something. You don't like it. You come home, you are complaining. You are not taking it back to say, no, I need to return this thing. I don't like it. You are complaining. You are letting your children know that you are permissive. You are helpless and they are watching you. Someone brings a shabby for it. Come on. You don't want to buy it. You feel it's too expensive or you don't need it. Or you don't even have any need to buy it. Not like you may not even attend the event. The person is not related to you. You don't have you are not obliged to buy it. You buy it. You get back home. You are complaining up and down. Your child's school fees. You get home. You complain. You complain. The, the school asks them to buy something. You do something. You get up. You are complaining. What are you doing? You are teaching your child permissiveness. I'm in a helpless situation. I cannot do anything about it. So let me swallow it. You are not modeling assertiveness. Share your daily experiences, your daily victories, things you experienced, how you were able to um, stand up for yourself. You were coming. You had a flat tire. What did you do when you had a flat tire? You talked to your child about it. You, you had um, a hitch on the road or a glitch or something happened on the road. How did you fix it? What did you do? You come back. You talk to your child about it. Whatever it is, you talk to your child about how you face your daily battles, your daily activities. They are learning from you. So model personal safety. Model personal protection. How you protect yourself from, um, from people, from bullies. Mo um, I mean, I mean, as, as, how do you call it? Model it. Share it with your child. Share it with them. How you stood up for yourself in the face of an event, share it with your child. How you, your, your self-defense skills came to play, share it with your child. Don't always just keep quiet and complain and swallow everything. Your child is watching. Let me share a quick story I shared in my book, Understand Your Child. My mom is kind of a phlegmatic, so you know phlegmatic by temperament. You need to get my book, Understand Your Child. It's a book that is, is very helpful. Your child's temperament, your temperament, strength, weaknesses, and everything you need to do. And some other bonuses when it comes to parenting. So growing up, my mom is kind of phlegmatic. And so she's always, she's not the one to be seen making troubles. I think she had a triangular movement. Church, work, and market. That is all. So she always, I don't remember having seen my mom having friends, friends. Let's say, oh, having friends, friends, friends. No, you know. She was very churchy, then go to work and all of that. So one day I was, something happened and someone slapped me. A, a guy slapped me, Pedro, I don't forget his name. Why did he slap me? He said I, I should date him. So he slapped me for that. So I didn't date, I didn't want to date him. He slapped me for that. And I wasn't going to tell my mom, no, because I felt, ah, my mom, she won't do anything about it because I have never seen her come out to like protect us, protect herself or anything. She was, ne she was never even in trouble. So because she was never even in trouble, there was almost never any need for her to protect herself. So that was it. But to my surprise, my mom came and the way she protected me was really, would, 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 would make it to Guinness, <laughs> Guinness records. So you need to show your children that you can protect yourself. Model self-protection before them. They are learning from you. So another thing you want to do is to register your children in self-defense classes. It is very important. They learn skills, physical defense, skills, how to push, push, how to block and all of that. It's very important in this era to register our children in self-defense classes. Now, I know that for centers that offer self-defense um, classes, talk about karate, so talks about um, taekwondo, martial arts and all of that, it can come as 
extra cost, extra financial burden that may not be readily available, even in schools. You know, it's also come, it comes at an extra cost that may not be readily available. So what you want to do, you want to explore online resources. Like the other day I told my children that we are all going to have, like, um, I, will, I have a community, parenting accountability community. And one of the things I'm encouraging them to do is to have a periodic project between them and their children, have a family project periodic. So my one of my projects I'm having with my children now is for us to take lessons on um self-defense so i told them that we are going to be exploring youtube we just get some videos some some routines then we save the video we learn it together as a family they will look for the boys major girls major and do that so you also want to explore all of that if you have the extra resource fine you can um talk to your child's school they always have martial art or taekwondo in schools you want to talk to them you want to register your child if want to if you have a maybe a stadium near you or a major center near you where you have people coming to teach that skill you want to explore that but if you are actually not high on resources like explore other um areas you also want to look for youtube channels where you can learn these things and have it as a family project together so you want to register your children in self-defense classes or self-defense courses it is important at least they know how to defend themselves to an extent the next thing you want to do is to encourage your child to be independent yes it is important do not always do everything for them let them handle their stuff by themselves when they learn to handle things by themselves they will learn to protect themselves it is not um it is not it is just basic knowledge it's not rocket science it's basic let them handle things by themselves you, do, you are not always you want to oh your child wants to do something maybe in school they have something um it has an issue with the teacher tell your child meet your teacher your child has an issue with a friend tell them to handle it Except, you know, it's a big deal. It's a major issue where you need to step in. You step in. But there are always age-appropriate issues that your child can handle. So always have them handle their things, handle their stuff by themselves. If your child comes to report to you of a case of bullying in school. You want to see your classmate. How does it happen and all of that? You want to teach them how to stand up for themselves. Self-defense. You don't even want to go there and start telling the teacher, don't um, see what happened. No. Teach your child how to stand up, how to teach them what to do, role play it. If he does this again, say this, say this, do this, role play it, you know, role play it. You teach them, okay, this is what happens when someone is, um, someone wants to bully you. These are the, these are the signs. Again, that's boundaries, danger signs and boundaries. When someone wants to bully you, when someone picks on you. When someone uh, maybe picks on you, you are on the road, someone pushes you away, someone tells you shut up, or someone um, kicks at you, or snatches your stuff and, be, and runs away. You know, these kind of things are signs that the person is actually checking you out. If they check you out, they want to know, okay, if they can bully you. So this is what you need to do. You need to stand up for yourself. When the person does this, do this, do this, and do that. So you need to raise them. Know that every time you are jumping, you are, I see that happens a lot. Parents call teachers. This is, this is, this one, ABC. This. No, you don't have to do all of that. Teach your children to be able to do things. And of course, also, I mean, bring this back to the home. Assign chores. Just raise them to be independent. Let them be able to clean their mess, fight their battles, stand up for themselves. Independence actually teaches children to stand up for themselves. Now, the next one is teach them reasoning skills. When we talk about reasoning skills, we talk about street smartness. Teach them to be able to reason. Now, this is why they will see danger signs when they are able to reason. You know, they want to understand why should I sit on your lap when the when the um, tricycle is not full? What do I need to sit on your lap for? Teach them to reason. reason. And one of the ways to teach them to reason is to minimize your yelling, your flogging. Now, there's a book we read in my community pack that actually, in, in, or most of the books we have read, they are always 
focused and centered around helping your children develop their reasoning skills. One of the major discipline tools you want to use is to have your children go over what they have done. You have done something, you see that and you reason it out, what you have done. You talk about it together, not yelling, not flogging, not all of that. It helps them reason. Build reasoning skills in them. When you, they have reasoning skills, they are in danger. They are able to reason. They are even able to spot danger. Okay, this might be a dangerous situation. Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Or even when the um, dangerous situation has met them, they are also able to reason themselves out. I remember one time in my book, I have a conversation starters book, a book that over 500 questions, random questions we can ask children. So one, one of the questions was, um, if you are going somewhere, and maybe you 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 it happened that you were kidnapped. So as you as the driver was kidnapper was driving along, suddenly the car stops, and and within a split second he is going in front to check the bonnet if something is wrong, something he can fix. What are you going to do? Are you going to remain in the car or try to run away or something? You know those kind of <laughs> those kind of um, questions that that gets them thinking. Now, this is where the conversation starters is very important because it helps them build reasoning skills. You sit down, you are thinking together, you are reasoning together, you are going through different questions. So at this point, I want to recommend my conversation starters card to help your children build reasoning skills. To help them build reasoning skills. So teach them reasoning skills. It is very important. How do you teach them reasoning skills? We are going to also do a class on that subsequently, how to teach our children reasoning skills, how to raise children who are able to reason for themselves. And one of the ways is not by jumping in the way all the time. Leave them, let them figure things out. Things that you know are age appropriate. Things that you know that it's, um, they are struggling with. Just leave them, let them fix, I mean, figure things out. Normalize mistakes, let them make mistakes. They do something, they make the mistake. They now realize, oh, oh, this is, know what i'm supposed to do they will learn by themselves if you are always keep teaching them always telling them what to do at every given time they are not going to be able to reason for themselves because it's just like plug and play so if you have a plug and play system how will you develop your own system you will be able to develop system photocopy just photocopy no so don't always use the plug and play parenting no rather Leave them to always reason. They will make mistakes. That is how they learn. That is how they, I was listening to my mentor, Samadhi Yemi, one day, and he said, nothing that was invented was invented the first time. Nothing. We know how um, Thomas Edison with the light bulb. A lot of things. Leave them. Let them reason out things. When they reason out things, when they are in danger, they are able to reason out things. When before they even um, before they even see danger, they are able to reason out things. So teach your children to be able to reason. And lastly, lastly, if your children are of um, um, social media age, teach them how to run them through social media safety. Social media, have a social media plan in your house. In our book, My Family Constitution, we have social media plan. We have a, a gadget and use and all of that. We have all of it. And to also help you create your social media plan for your children. Have a social media plan. Let them know about social media etiquette. Let them know about social media boundaries. Let them know about social media realities fakes let them know everything they need to know about social media now remember your child may be of a different age so you want to take everything i have taught today you actually want to um tweak them to meet the age of your child because the age of your child will determine what you actually need to teach him what will be relevant to him so take what i have taught today Tweak it to meet the age of your child. And if you put everything into use, like I am putting them into use, I'm not a perfect parent. No, I have never prided myself to be a perfect parent. I'm a parent who is learning. And I have young children who are typically children. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to raise my children holistically. And I'm carrying you along 
on the same journey so hopefully you come back next time next time next time next time and next time again and we keep learning together so what i'm going to do now we i have um a worksheet for raising children who can protect themselves and i'm going to share in my community parenting accountability community is a worksheet where you where you where you have um things you are going to do you check them you use, you use them to track your um how far you are going or how you intend to go in raising children who can protect themselves if you want to be a part of pack yes it's a community for every parent it's not a free community it's a registration and a subscription community so what you want to do you want to leave a comment in the comment section to ask how you can be part of the pack family parenting accountability community I want to know how you can be part of the family so that we all can smash our parenting goals thank you so much for watching again subscribe share leave a comment and do where to invite every other parent to this community so that we all grow together and raise healthy society my name is enimye forever bye for now subscribe.